Hi, my name is Tim, and in today's video, we're going to go through some RC basics. This will be part of a playlist of various videos on the basics of radio control flight. Today, we are going to learn how to take an electronic speed control, a motor, and a battery, and learn how to solder the connector connectors to make sure all these things plug in and work correctly. This is something you have to do on um, every motor, ESC, and battery you get, and we'll go through that step by step. Again, for further training videos, go ahead and take a look at the card up on the top. Also, at the end of the video will be another link to the playlist for the Beginner RC series. Okay, these are all the components we're going to work with today. We've got the brushless motor with the three connectors right here. We have an electronic speed control, again, with the three wires that go to the motor, the two wires up top that connect to the battery, and then the standard plug that goes into the receiver. Getting prepped for everything, we've got a battery here. Notice that the two wires do not have connectors on them. That will be part of the process. These are the XT60 battery connectors. To show how these work, you just have a female and a male, and it, they go like this and then they just pull apart. Very important to put the uh, male part on the battery so that you uh, can avoid not accidentally shorting out the battery, uh, the one if this was on the battery side. We'll get to that later. Here is heat shrink tubing. Three heat shrink for the motor connectors. Two for the battery. And again, I'll emphasize throughout the video, there is no polarity when we connect the motor to the electronic speed control, or just plug it into uh, just pick three. An important tip is when you plug everything in, you test run it, and the motor goes in the wrong direction, all you have to do is swap out two of these connectors, unplug it, swap them out, plug them back in, the motor will work in the opposite direction. That's just the way the electronics work. On the other hand, it is super important to keep track of polarity for the electrical input from the batteries. Note this red is positive, black is negative. You have a red and a black on the battery. Do not mix those up. In other words, we want red to red. If for some reason you were to solder it that the black goes into the red, that would be a reverse polarity. When you plug it in, you would short out the system, potentially damage the battery. For sure, you'd fry the electronic speed control. Uh, please don't do that. As a side note to these components with the um, XT60 connectors and the heat shrink tubing, what I do is I have a ready supply on hand and I bought these from Amazon. So they're fine connectors, I have plenty on hand. Here is heat shrink tubing. Again, I bought it in bulk from Amazon. There's enough heat shrink tubing to last a lifetime and that's just what I did. The other thing that is needed are the gold bullet connectors, and you'll see how those work. These are already soldered into place, the male connectors onto the motor, and that's fairly common with the heat shrinking tubing. The way it works is the bullet connectors go in like that, and they come back out, and what we do is we solder the, water, the wire into this end of the bullet connector. And so, these connectors usually come with a bag with the motor, well they always do, that has things like spinners, prop adapters, engine mounts. Look for those bullet connectors right there. As I mentioned, the XT60s you have to buy on your own to connect to the battery, whatever system you use. I like the XT60s a lot. The Dean connectors are just too hard to deal with. Heat shrinking tubing is discussed. The one other connector on the ESC is the standard connection to the receiver. So the electronic speed control has to get some signal from the system on what to do with the throttle because again, it, the electronic speed control, the whole purpose of the ESC is to take power from the battery, give that power through these three wires to power the motor with full electrical energy, in this case 11.1 .1 volts with a three cell pack. At the same time, step down the voltage to 5 volts to um, power the servos. And that happens through the throttle uh, cable uh, right here. They can read the throttle input and provide electrical power to the receiver and servos. 
The way that is done is here is an AR620 uh, receiver right here. It's very hard to see, but in the plastic, if you look very carefully, it will have a code for the three wires on the connector. On the left, you have brown or black, that is the ground. The middle one, red, is the uh, five volt pow uh, power line, red. And the yellow one is the signal that'll tell it what throttle setting it should be at. So in this receiver, most, the black or brown, the ground is at the bottom, just black bottom, and it simply plugs into the throttle channel like this. There's no soldering required, and that is what we do when everything is complete. So we'll leave the receiver aside for now and go ahead and discuss soldering the gold bullet connectors for the three wires from the ESC to connect to the outrunner motor. And we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we're going to um, take the three wires from the electronic speed control and solder them to three of the bullet connectors. The one thing we want to do before we do any of that is to put the heat shrink tubing in place first. It's just about impossible to do this afterwards. It's just a lot easier to do this first thing first. So now the heat shrink tubing is in place. Um, it'll be a little bit hot down here with the soldering. We'll just um, hope that that doesn't shrink it too much, but that should work out okay for what we're gonna do. Now we're going to uh, take the bullet connector. Remember, we want to make sure that we solder the correct end. So this is verifying the round one is here. This will be in like here in a holder. Um, let me just turn this around so we can see where we're going. This is a holder. There's any number of them on Amazon. This one is called the jig is up. It's just you have to have something to hold uh, the soldering parts in place because it gets very hot. This is the soldering iron right here. This is our solder, and this is a little bit of flux to clean off the soldering iron. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So what we'll do is we will just put a drop of flux on there. And what we're gonna do is just tin this a little bit. We just put the solder iron here and get a little bit of solder on the wire itself. Now we'll take this the soldering iron, we just plug that into the little hole and get it connected like that. Okay, now we're going to solder the connectors to the battery. Uh, one thing I want to point out on LiPo battery, this is the standard balanced charger. It has nothing to do with the installation operation of the system. This plugs into a balancing board to safely recharge your LiPo batteries. Because I've taken off the ends and these are exposed wires, this is a battery with a charge. I've taped the black one um, onto the back, so we're going to be working one at a time. As before, we want to make sure we put on our heat shrink tubing before we do any soldering. And what's gonna happen on this one, I think we can use a little bit less length just due to the shorter length of the wire. It's gonna get hot. So we'll put this on and we'll have to remember to do the same for the black. We're ready for that time. Now, these are the um, connector that goes on the battery. We'll solder onto this um, end and again, it plugs into here like this. We want to use this um, male end here because there's less exposure for a short as opposed to here. We'll keep that on the uh, ESC itself. So again, we'll take this and with the convention that I use is the round one is the red. We'll go ahead and Sorry, that'll be a little bit better. And the idea is using solder 
oops, to connect this here like that. All right, so now what I've done is I've set up my battery for the solder. I've got the um, heat shrink tubing here on back. I've got the jig holding on the bottom. It's in the round thing for the positive. I, I use round for the red, uh, although you could do it either way. Just be consistent and you could vent with all your connectors. This is held in place into the little hole there, the um, receptacle. And now we're just going to flow solder in there to keep everything connected. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So we've uh, soldered on the three bullet connectors here to the um, ESC. We'll do the heat shrink tubing in a second. We've got the, um, these are already done, and on the battery, we've got our two connectors soldered there. We'll do the heat shrink tubing in a second. The final thing is the female for the battery connection. This goes here like this. Notice there's only one way to do it with the red. We've used as a convention, red is round. Put in the solder connections for the um, power connections to the electronic speed control. So red is here, round is here, and we'll go ahead and do that soldering now. So we'll just do a little bit of tinning on here. And I'll get this set up so everything is held in place like that. Again, one last check, red round. It'll just flow in some solder. Okay, so we are done with the soldering. We have the motor. This was done before. This will plug in here. We'll plug everything in a second after the heat shrinking tubing. And here is the battery connector. Red is round. This connects into the battery for the electrical power, so I'm not gonna power it up right now. Um, but everything is all set. So we'll take a break here real quick and we'll do the heat shrink tubing. Okay, for the heat shrink tubing, I just use the air gun that we use to shrink our iron on coverings. And so what we'll do for this is we just take the heat shrink tubing we put on before and we get it so it covers that end like that. Do the other one cover it again to prevent electrical shorts. You can see that came out very nice and now we're simply going to heat shrink that with the gun. And it came out very nicely and so that's all set for that. And this is the battery with the connector here. Again we just slide up the heat shrink tubing like this to cover up the um, solder connectors, get it right butted up there, and use the heat gun. Okay, very nice. And then finally, we'll do the last and final step with our little connectors here. Again, we don't want to get them too far, but just to cover up, we'll get this one along here, and this one along here. So now we're just about done. Uh, we'll go ahead and have the battery. I'm not going to connect it just because I don't want to power it up, but this is red to red. This just connects in for the battery. This is, as we've discussed before, the connection to the receiver, no soldering there. And then for the motor, we just take these little bullet connectors and just put in one, two, and three, and your motor is connected. So now we have the motor connected to the ESC, this connected to the battery, this connects into the throttle channel of the receiver, the black ground on the bottom, and you have your completed setup ready to go. One other tip I'd give you, once you determine that the motor is working in the right direction, in other words, the bullet connectors are into the correct connector, if the, if the motor is in the wrong direction, you literally just swap out this one for this one, and by just swapping any one of them into the other, the motor will reverse direction. But these are still, 
exposed outlets, I just take a little bit of tape and when I put it into the airplane, I just tape them so they're apart, so there's no danger of them touching each other inside the airplane. So that is the demonstration of how to solder up connectors to your LiPo battery, the connector to the ESC, and the bullet connectors for your motor, and you're all set to go fly. So finally, just a review of what everything looks like when we've installed it. Uh, this is the kitten right here. You can see the receiver here is what we described here. The electronic speed control. This thing right here, we have a little bit bigger one located right here. Right here on the side, I glued it to the side. You have the connections to the uh, motor up here from the electronic speed control. The ESC plugs into the receiver. And what we do is makes no difference when you connect it whether the plane or the battery goes first. I usually do the plane first. We plug it in. You can hear the receiver chirping. We turn on the transmitter. And we can see that the rudder and elevator all work. And I have a little a safe start thing here. We hold it for three seconds. And once we get the green light, the motor works as well. Okay, I'm turn it on. Again, thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.